I'm the rug. And I'm the rat. And this is a Rugrats Reboot. We recently watched a bunch of episodes of Rugrats because I mentioned the Hanukkah episode while we were making dinner for Hanukkah and found out that Noah had never seen an episode of Rugrats and I had to amend that immediately. And then Chloe made us watch a bunch of episodes of All Grown Up. And then, because our brains are huge and disordered, we started conceptualizing a new reboot to build on the established foundations of the franchise. Because we're geniuses. Yeah, because we're geniuses. There is a real Rugrats reboot coming to Paramount on May 27th. Which is tomorrow if everything goes according to plan with this video. <laughs> um, it appears to just be a CGI version of the original show with little to no differences as far as premise and structure goes. We can't say much about the reboot until it comes out, but so far it seems fine. Seems cute. They've got the original cast of voice actors for it back, which is nice. And the animation seems kind of cute, so I'm not mad at it. It's just that we're not really sure who the reboot's for. Late 90s, early 2000s aesthetics are very hip and in right now, so there's been a lot of reboots of properties from then, like the Powerpuff Girls reboot that's coming to the CW, and the Winx Club Netflix show that nobody liked. But these make sense because they're geared towards like teens and young adults who probably grew up watching these shows as kids and now they're ready for some more mature versions of them. Which is why we think Rugrats needs a more grown up reboot instead of just another show uh, where they're babies. So we made one. Because we're geniuses. Speaking of us being geniuses, at the end of this video we're gonna have an announcement about our Patreon, so stay tuned for that. If you're interested in supporting two geniuses, I hit the mic, I'm good. Two geniuses <laughs> in making content like this. I love being a genius and making videos like this, and we're finally able to monetize our videos, which is very fun, but oh boy, we're not actually making any money from this yet. We'll get to all of that later. Uh, but first, here's our concept for a more mature take on Rugrats. It's called Rugrats, all pubed up. not called All Pubed Up. Do you have a better name for it? No. Never calling it All Pubed Up. Oh, I hate that f***ing name. Um, the same way that All Grown Up was set about 10 years after Rugrats, our reboot is set about 10 years after that, putting them all about college age, mimicking the age progression of the audience. We know that a very large portion of the people who grew up watching it are actually older than that now, but we're not. And a lot of our ideas only work if they're in college or college age, so we're just gonna go with that. So the first episode will be establishing where each character is now and how they've changed or stayed the same in the past 10 years. We put a lot of thought into how each of these kids would grow as they reach adulthood, and we've tried to stay true to who they are within the canon while still giving them some room to grow. Uh, let's start with Tommy, who acted as the protagonist for the majority of Rugrats and All Grown Up. Um, he is now a 20-year-old film major who's fallen into a creative slump. When he first got to school, he'd been really excited to start making movies, and his head was bursting with ideas about adventures and cowboys and aliens and cowboy aliens. But his professors did not love him making cowboy alien movies. Yeah, they very quickly shut that down because they wanted their students to be making gritty, serious films. And at first Tommy was like, Okay, I'll, I'll follow their rules and do my assignments the way they want me to, but I can still find ways to make them fun and creative. And for a while he was doing that. But over time, as he moved into more advanced classes and had stricter professors, it started getting easier and easier to just meet the requirements and just kind of fly under the radar. And now that's all he really does, and he's quickly losing all the passion that he had for filmmaking when he was younger. Yeah, now he's just kind of cranking out these very bland, by-the-book student films that are being well-received by his professors, but there's no joy in them. Like, 
Before, he might have been making bad movies, but they were fun to watch and they were fun to make and they were always starring his friends. And now he's making technically good movies that just suck to watch and his friends don't want to be in them anymore. Okay, so I took the liberty of drawing our versions of the Rugrats characters. So first up, Tommy. I drew him, instead of his iconic blue crop top, I gave him a light blue hoodie um, as kind of a nod back to that. Um, I imagine that this would be his main costume for the season. I don't think he's changing his clothes until like the last episode when he finally starts getting his groove back a little bit. So yeah, I think he would just be kind of slinking around in this dirty blue hoodie. So I kept his like purpley bluish hair because I think it's cute and it's fun. He looks very bland <laughs> overall. I love him in original Rugrats, but in All Grown Up, he's kind of boring. I feel like they tried to make him just like the straight man and he was always very fun and adventurous. So hopefully season two of our <laughs> version will get back to original Tommy. So Tommy's stuck in a rut, but you know who's actually doing quite well for himself? His roommate, Chucky. Chucky's doing great. Yeah. <laughs> Kira finally told Chaz that he and Chucky should maybe go get some tests done. <laughs> so now Chucky has some official diagnoses for the anxiety and the autism. <laughs> and now he's properly medicated and has been learning some nice coping skills for the many, many things he's got going on. And he's feeling himself now. He's feeling fun and flirty and confident. <laughs> He's not learned to like dress himself better or brush his hair or anything. Men are just really into the way that he is. And also, he's gay now. If he was gay then, he just knows now. <laughs> God, I love confident gay Chucky. It's what he deserves. Unfortunately, he still is Chucky. <laughs> so even with all the various anxiety medications he's on, he's still fairly neurotic. This comes out the most in regards to his job, which is working for minimum wage at Piggy's Pizza Palace, the knockoff Rugrats Chuck E. Cheese place. He's taking classes in like social anthropology and kind of working through all the general ed classes while he decides exactly what he wants to do. Uh, he also runs a local D&D session at the comic book store uh, for kids because he started to miss the adventures they all used to go on when they were little and he got into D&D as a way to like bring back a little bit of gentle adventure into his life like gay people do. Yeah, like gay people do. Yeah, and he likes DMing for the local kids to help like foster some of that adventure in their lives. This roommate Chucky. <laughs> also, I forgot to say, um, but I did one of them in my style and then one in Rugrats style of what I think they would look like in an animated show. I think Chucky's so cute and he's so fun. Um, so I tried to do some nods to his original character. Like he has um, little pins with um, the little like Saturn planet like on his shirt um, and then a little gay pride pin. Um, and then here I gave him a little rainbow striped sweater um, and then that's a little chewy stim toy shaped like a rocket ship because um, I thought that would be cute. <laughs> I tried to do some of his like original colors of like the blue, yellow, and red. Um, he is not brushing his hair and he still has his purple glasses um, but I feel like he could get hit on in a bar. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Good for him. His sister Kimmy is a fashion student who is just returning from a semester abroad in Paris when the show starts. And she's insufferable about it. Yes, she will not stop talking about how much she'll miss being able to run down to the local patissier and grab a fresh croissant before class. But she's very cute, so it's fine. She's loving all of her classes, which are all things like fashion history and figure drawing and costume design, which she's very excited about. Um, and she starts just wearing a lot of fun homemade costumes because she's a fashion icon. Also, she's been posting a lot of TikTok videos uh, about her experience in the fashion school in Paris and all the clothes she's designed and made for herself and just of her doing like little dances and stuff. And she's not famous, but she's definitely built up a decent following. But since it's Rugrats and everything is slightly off-brand, it probably couldn't be called TikTok. So we're just gonna call this Rugrats universe version Clip Clop, the social media app for <laughs> hip trendy teens who also like horses. Clip Clop. She's also a lesbian because of course she is. Yeah, you look at it. <laughs> Kimmy, my beloved. Um, so Kimmy, I think she's also really cute. 
Um, so I gave her little Reptar earrings because I think that's so cute and she's a lesbian so she'd wear very funky little lesbian earrings. I don't have my ears pierced or I would wear funky lesbian earrings. Um, I think she would have a very eclectic style. I think of all of them she would have the most diversity in like her outfits. Um, so I gave her like a cute little lacy blouse layered under a yellow tank top. Um, again, nodding back to the original costumes. Um, and then here I did kind of like funky fishnets and go-go boots and like fun kind of mod skirt. Um, and I gave her her little buns because I think that's very important for her to have her little buns because they're so cute. While she was in Paris, she met a very sophisticated lesbian hipster with an asymmetrical haircut and a septum piercing named Jacques um, and fell in love and they're trying to do like a long distance relationship now that Kimmy's back in the States. And as an audience, we want to be happy for Kimmy, but right away we're not sure that we like this fancy Paris lady. Kimmy's happy though, especially now that she's back home with her friends and her roommate and best best friend, Lil. Lil has grown into a very cool laid-back she-they who got a sports scholarship to play women's soccer at a local college. She's also coaching children's soccer on the weekends and also, also, is bisexual. <laughs> this bisexuality has mostly been theoretical in the past though, like they've had crushes on girls before, which has mostly just been vibing. Until? <laughs> Until Kimmy comes back from Paris with a cool Parisian girlfriend and Lil suddenly freaks out a little bit because they didn't even realize that they liked Kimmy that way and all of a sudden she's just super jealous of Kimmy's girlfriend. I think Lil is so cute and I really like how her character design came out here. Um, so instead of her um, kind of mint green jumper dress with the pink shirt under, um, I gave her a pink shirt and then um, a green flannel. She and Phil both have matching little pronoun pins uh, and then also I gave her a little bi pride pin. Um, and then in All Grown Up, I think it's really cute that after the first season she always had a little streak in her hair um, that would get like dyed different colors in each episode and I think that's so cute. Um, so for her new design I wanted her to do something kind of different so I did uh, just like grown out pink hair with like long roots so you still kind of get that little bit of color without being like fully all over. Um, and then the earrings are little ducks as a nod back to the OG little clan of the duck outfits. And then also she and Phil both have matching trans pride chokers because I think that's really cute. And like they like being twins and like I want them to be their own people and have their own identities and stuff. But also I think it's really cute if they ended up just both being trans and bisexual so they can share their little pride stuff. Um, and then here, I don't think she's a visco girl, but like kind of that vibe of like the oversized t-shirt and like denim shorts and sneakers, just like, like they're very just chill. They're just hanging out, playing soccer, being a real cool, chill, laid back she they. Meanwhile, Phil, Lil's twin, is straight up just vibing living at home. Phil is a big, strong, bisexual he they. Just like you. Yeah, just like me. <laughs> um, Side note, they're both trans, and I have absolutely no way of explaining how this aligns with the canon of Rugrats and All Grown Up. Like, I'm pretty sure we see them being born in Rugrats, <laughs> but you know in your heart that I'm right about this? Like, they can be whatever kind of trans you want, like, you can make up any explanations. They switched places as babies and no one switched them back or their mom was just like that conducting a 20 year long social experiment. <laughs> but they are trans and they are here and they have matching pronoun pins and there is nothing you can do to stop it. Nothing about adulthood has mellowed Phil in any way. He is not currently in school, he just lives at home with their parents and works at the Java Lava coffee house because his parents made him. <laughs> He does this to supplement his real passion, Thirst Trap Twitch streaming. <laughs> but again, this is Rugrats World, so it's not called Twitch, it's itch streaming, and nobody wants them to be doing it. <laughs> yeah, he might be making thirst traps, but nobody is thirsty. <laughs> uh, They're making no money from this, <laughs> and they only have like 26 followers, but he's treating it all very seriously. And those 26 followers love him. 
but his parents would love for him to have a real job and to not be living in their house anymore. Yeah, because their parents are so clearly in a lavender marriage, and we like to think that they struck a deal many years ago that they would get married and get a house together and raise some babies because they both love babies, oh, and babies. then once those babies grew up and moved out, they'd just get a divorce and go be gay separately. But that hasn't happened yet because their stupid kid is streaming Slimecraft in a Catboy maid costume <laughs> to an audience of 20 people. And at this point, they're not even sure if they're ever going to get a divorce. They love each other, but oh boy, they've been stuck living together for 20 years now and they would love to not keep doing that. So here's Phil. Um, so I also wanted to do uh, a nod back to the original costumes. So I give him like a mint green sweatshirt with a pink shirt underneath and then the matching little heave pin uh, and then the matching trans flag choker. Um, also I give him a septum piercing for his like full body outfit. I don't think Phil knows how to dress himself. I think he just kind of throws on whatever clothes smell the least dirty on his floor. Um, maybe he'd have more subscribers on itch stream <laughs> if he could dress himself more. Um, so I gave him a little slime craft crop top. Um, yeah, I think he's very cute and I love him. I think he and Lil might be my favorite designs on these. Day two. Meanwhile, Dill, Tommy's little brother, is taking like every available art class and making really weird sculptures in his parents' basement, which is where he lives. Yeah, he still lives at home because he's 19 and weird, and he's just having a lot of fun getting into a different art medium like every week, but his main medium is always sculpture. He's also everyone's dealer. I don't think we can say that if we want Mr. YouTube to actually give us money now. Um, so let's just replace it with dandelions. <laughs> mm -hmm. Whenever we say dandelion, just assume that we mean a different plant. Also yesterday when we did this we talked about how I feel like we need to clarify that we are not because we keep working people into like everything for the comedic effect. I feel like if we were it, we'd be a lot cooler. Um, also, I felt like I needed to clarify that um, all of my aesthetic choices are made while fully sober. <laughs> um, so he's everyone's dandelion dealer. Tommy does not know this. He is fully unaware that all of his friends buy dandelions from his little brother. He also helps Tommy with all of his films and is basically just his unpaid assistant. I don't think he knows that he should be getting paid for the work that he's doing in the props and sets that he's building. I want Dill to have a mullet so bad. I think it would be very fun and I think he would definitely hop on that quarantine mullet trend so fast. I think Stu in Dee Dee's bathroom just has orange hair all over it from when he cut his own mullet. Um, I gave him a sweatshirt um, and a Cryptozoology Society t-shirt with a little UFO because definitely he'd be real into cryptids and I would love for there to be an episode in some season of this where he just takes everyone hunting for Bigfoot or Mothman or something. I think that'd be so fun. Um, and then I gave him little paint splattered jeans because he's an artist. And yeah, I think he's real fun and I love him. Also, definitely he owns a pair of weed socks. No, he owns like 10 pairs of weed socks. At the start of the show, we also have a homecoming by way of Angelica, who has been away at business school and is about to go into her final semester. She has also been trying to make it as an Instagram influencer, and she's built up like a decent enough following. She's posting a lot of fashion things and sponsorships for those flat tummy tees and she really wants to get into drop shipping. But she has very recently been horribly canceled online for taking shady sponsorship deals and then being very, very mean to anybody who's called her out for it. So she's come home for the break, but also to hide out while she takes a break from social media and lets the drama blow over a little. Angelica, OG girl boss. Here's her. This is her Instagram look. Um, so very polished and made up. She's posting lots of sponsored ads for flat tummy tees. Um, and then this is her fancy business lady outfit. So I wanted her to have a fun pink pantsuit with like some fun little accents of like neon yellow. Seems fun, very Angelica, very over the top. Very Barbie, very Cynthia. 
So yeah. Her best and only friend Susie is still living in town and is now a very locally well-known musician. Yet yeah, Susie's her best friend. I do not think she is Susie's best friend. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> um, Susie's been doing pretty well for herself, uh, playing local gigs, and recently one of her songs blew up on Clip Clop <laughs> uh, after Kimmy posted a little video dancing to it. Now all the cool teens are dancing to her song. <laughs> Susie, my beloved. <laughs> um, Susie is the most beautiful girl in the world. Um, I gave her some fun floral prints because her original costume was floral prints. So I did like some lavender flowers and then um, yellow and green little headscarf because um, she wore those a few times and all grown up and I think that's really cute. I gave her a little red flower earrings because her original costume had red flowers on it. Um, she's just very fun and chill and I feel like she should look like someone who you see and you just know that she's very nice and kind and sweet and loving and I love her. Angelica is very jealous that Susie and Kimmy are both doing so well on social media, especially because the closest that she's come to being famous on Clip Clop has been through people making videos about how awful she is. I think starting with these homecomings allows the audience to see the characters in these new situations, but through the eyes of the characters themselves. Uh, with all this established, we're free to get into some of the overarching plots of the season. We are not going to go episode by episode like we did in our Stranger Things video. Because uh, that video did not do well enough to justify doing it again. And the camera doesn't work. But this is how we come back to the characters and what have become their normal lives. Tommy's two main plots through the season are very identity crisis based. Mm -hmm. He's trying to reignite his passion for filmmaking and also trying to figure out why he started feeling weird about his roommate, Chucky. He's supposed to choose an independent project to work on for school, but he's been having a lot of trouble finding anything that inspires him, especially because nobody wants to be in his movies anymore, except for Dill, who has to because they're brothers, and Phil, who still kind of wants to be a male model, and also his parents let him get out of work when he's helping with Tommy's movies. So he's at least getting something out of it. Okay. <laughs> so... We're not trying to make Chucky slutty, but I think he would be right to be. Yeah, it's his right to be slutty if he wants. Like, he's feeling himself, and men are really into that. And very often, Tommy will walk out into their little living room, kitchen, apartment area, and find a random man sitting in his chair at his table eating his cereal. And at first it was kind of fun teasing Chucky about all his little trysts, because it's like, oh, you're confident now? Okay, but lately it's been less fun and he keeps getting really annoyed and that feeling of annoyance is building up inside of him. And he's not sure if it's just because he's having a hard time with school and he's already feeling frustrated so having random people in his apartment eating his cereal is just adding to that. Or if he's secretly homophobic. He's now spending a lot of time trying to get introspective to see if maybe he's actually homophobic because he thought he was totally cool with Chucky and also all of his other friends being gay and he didn't really think about it after they came out but maybe he's homophobic so deep down that even he doesn't know yeah he's just so secretly homophobic that it's a secret to himself. <laughs> Basically, he's living out that Reddit post where that guy was like, wow, it makes me feel really weird when my gay roommate has gay sex and doesn't hang out with me because he's a bit too busy kissing other guys. Do you think I'm homophobic or is this just like a completely normal thing to feel? It's like, buddy. <laughs> so Tommy's going through it and it's gonna take him a while to figure all of that out. And honestly, he would probably greatly benefit from knowing that his brother could hook him up with some Dandelions. Sweet dandelions. <laughs> we'll check back in with Tommy in a minute. Uh, but at the same time, Lil is having a very similar but also wildly different gay roommate crisis. <laughs> she is also freaking out because her roommate is having gay sex. On the she's, phone. Yeah, on the phone. Um, but she's much more self-aware about it than Tommy is. Which, in Tommy's defense, is causing Lil a whole different set of problems. Yeah, Lil fully understands why she feels the way that she does, and she knows that it's because she's in love with Kimmy, but it's very bad timing to realize that because now Kimmy has a hot, mean French girlfriend. Oh my god, Kimmy's hot, mean French girlfriend. <laughs> I love Kimmy, but she also seems like the kind of person who gets bullied right to her face is just, haha, <laughs> okay, about the whole thing. 
and doesn't really pick up on the intricacies of the social situations. Am I making this an autism family? Yes. Because families and developmental disorders are not things that are bound by blood. They're just things that happen. And I think that's beautiful. Anyway, I don't think there's anything particularly like wrong with the relationship. I just think Kimmy needs someone who's nice and enjoys whimsy in her weird costumes. And this woman likes to smoke little French cigarettes at the little French cafe while drinking the little French coffees and kind of sneering at Kimmy's fruit smoothies over FaceTime. And that's not what Kimmy needs. Mm -hmm. So Lil's caught in this very weird place where they don't like Kimmy's girlfriend and they don't think they're a good fit. She doesn't know if that's just because Kimmy's girlfriend is actually a bad person or if it's just their jealousy clouding their judgment because it's hard to be objective in a situation where there's romantic feelings involved. So Lil's just kind of stuck hovering respectfully, trying to be supportive of Kimmy and maybe kind of trying to hint that they don't love the way that her girlfriend talks to her without overstepping any boundaries. Mostly, she's just doing a lot of pining and spending a weird amount of time watching Kimmy's clip-clop videos. Um, the ones without her mean, hot French girlfriend in the background. <laughs> Throughout the first few episodes, we'd also see Kimmy slowly getting less and less content with playing phone tag and having to wake up at 3 a.m. to do a video call that Jacques doesn't even answer, and she's starting to get kind of disparaged when she keeps trying to show Jacques her new costumes and things that she's made and she's really excited about them and Jack just like puffs on her little cigarette and is like oh you made a little costume for a little baby magnifique is it <laughs> I think it's obvious that we're not owners just kind of based on <laughs> when Kimmy just wanted her to like the thing that she made as much as Kimmy does also it's not super relevant but it will come into play later uh, Kimmy and Lil have a third roommate who's just this random other girl and she's annoying and they wish she wasn't their roommate but they're both too polite to kick her out and she was really helping with rent while Kimmy was out of the country. So they're just kind of stuck with her until she decides to move out on her own and while their storylines are happening there's also just various little comedic moments of their roommate being annoying and the two of them like joking about it and bonding over it. Another overarching plot this season is about Angelica. Okay, so she initially comes home after getting canceled online, but that's not the main reason. That's mostly just the excuse she's using. Angelica's mom was a businesswoman, as we all know. She's a very fancy business lady. <laughs> Um, and when Angelica was starting to apply for colleges, her mom made some phone calls to her alma mater and made some big donations and got Angelica a spot there. So for the past three years, she's been at business school, learning how to be a business lady, but that's never really been her passion. As we know from like every episode of Rugrats, Angelica loves to be in the spotlight. <laughs> she loves to perform and she's always been very drawn to music and just kind of any form of theatrical arts. She's always wanted to be rich and famous and she was sort of mollifying that desire with her social media accounts and had always been in the back of her mind, thought that like maybe she'd find enough success online that she'd be able to justify dropping out of business school to be a full-time influencer. But now she's supposed to be starting her last semester of business school and she's lost like all of her followers and she's suddenly having to face the fact that she's about to be a businesswoman and she has no desire to do that. This is an Angelica who has fallen from grace, who is lost and grasping desperately at anything that could change the direction her life is taking. She doesn't think that she can tell her parents that she's been dreading going back to business school because her mom pulled so many strings to get her in and they've been paying this huge tuition and they wouldn't want it all to go to waste. So when the time comes for her to go back, she lies and pretends that everything's fine and normal and then just doesn't go back to school. Instead, she shows up on Susie's doorstep and tells her that she's just going to be crashing there for a while. And Susie says, hello? Maybe ask first? And Angelica's like, Okay, Susie, can I please stay here? I don't want to be a businesswoman. And Susie's like, yeah, sure, but I'm not doing any of your dishes and we're trading off cooking dinner. So the two of them are living together until Angelica figures out what she's going to do with her life. Meanwhile, Phil is still just vibing and playing Slimecraft. He and Chucky each have less of a specific character arc this season, but I think that's mostly just because we really like how they are and want to leave room for them to just 
hang out and play off of the other characters. Like, I think we definitely have some nice scenes of Lil going home to hang out with Phil and talk about her gay roommate crisis while they play video games together. And Chucky. I don't think that he has in any way become better at being a person, but I think he's at least ignoring that and just moving through the world in his own way, which is a very helpful decision to make. He was trying to be a full-time student, but then he took too many philosophy classes and had to be in too many study groups with strangers, and everything was just very loud. So he's taking a step back and just kind of vibing. I really like our version of Chucky. I love him. Like, I think he comes home from his knockoff child's birthday party place job and like doesn't even have the costume all the way off before he's high. Like everything's going- Fun dandelions. <laughs> everything's going great for him. And I think I just don't want to add any storylines mm -hmm. to that. I think I don't want to give him conflicts. Mm -hmm. He's just vibing. Yeah. Um, also, um, all of Kimmy's clip clop followers love him. <laughs> he's He's been in the background of a lot of her videos. Going through it, mm -hmm. experiencing life. Uh -huh. He's just going through living his funky little life, and men love it. Like, he just stands there, looking slightly lost, and every gay man in a three-mile radius senses it, and senses that the only way to help is to immediately give him their phone number. <laughs> so his arc is less focused on any change in character, because he's perfect, and has been since the moment he was born. So his season through line is mostly seen in the campaign that he runs for the kids. Uh, every episode we get a little bit about what he's up to, and one episode is just entirely him running a campaign based on one of the more fun Baby Rugrats adventures, and we get to see the way that that goes, the way that he's changed since being a child, but he still loves all the adventures and he still loves his friends. So let's go back to Dill. <laughs> In one episode, Dee Dee and Stu come down to the basement and tell him that they've found out about him dealing dandelions, and they are not happy about it. Uh, they give him an ultimatum and say that he can either hand over any dandelions that he has in his room and stop dealing, or he can move out and find a real job to support himself with. Unfortunately, they have miscalculated how much money he is making from Tommy's friends. They assumed that either he just agreed to stop, or we go sleep on Tommy and Chucky's couch for a week before realizing that real jobs suck and looking for apartments suck, and then he'd come back. But instead he's just like, oh, okay, sure, and packs up his stuff. Coincidentally, Kimmy and Lil's roommate has just decided that she's moving in with her boyfriend, and Kimmy and Lil haven't been able to find any roommates that weren't at least as terrible as this girl. <laughs> so when Dill shows up with a stack of cash and says that he'll give them a discount on dandelions if they let him live with them, they're like, yeah, of course, come on in. I feel like it's incredibly important to emphasize that Chucky, who is older than them by a year, could legally enter any dandelion establishment and purchase things for himself. Yeah, but he, that would include him talking to people, and he doesn't love that. And so I think he and Dill have just kind of worked out like, okay, neither of us will ever tell anyone else that this could happen. It's mutually beneficial it's, for both of them. It's mutually beneficial. So, um, hey, does anybody else remember the episode of Rugrats where Phil and Chucky both put on dresses and then they go to the park and a bunch of boys at the park tell them they're pretty and give them presents and then when they find out that they're not girls, they hate crime them. Or the episode of All Grown Up, where Phil dresses as Lil and goes on a date with a boy and is very flattered that the boy thinks he's pretty. Oh, just us thinking about those like all the time. We're gonna explore that. In one episode, Phil and Chucky have a fun adventure together where they get dressed up and go to a drag show and they have a lot of fun and lots of boys tell them they're pretty and buy them drinks. And neither of them hooks up with anybody or anything. It's just a fun night out on the town where they make a lot of new friends and get drunk and dance and it's really cute. And they end up crashing at Tommy and Chucky's place because it's a lot closer than the DeVille house. 
but this happens to be like right as Tommy is reaching his limit emotionally, trying to figure out why he feels so weird about Chucky bringing guys home. So when he walks out in the morning and sees his friend Phil sitting in his chair in their boxers eating his cereal with last night's makeup smeared all over their face, he just kind of screams and runs out the door. The energy is very much just with Phil? Him too? And Phil's just like, well, what's his problem? <laughs> Tommy doesn't really know where else to go, so he goes to Kimmy and Lil and Dill's place and tells them everything that he's been feeling and how he really doesn't want to be homophobic, but he's so scared that he is, and the three of them are all just like, Tommy, I love you, but you're so stupid, God bless. They explain to him that he's not homophobic, he's just also not heterosexual. And he's like, so what, I'm jealous of Chucky? <laughs> I'm in love with Chucky? And they have to explain to him that no, he's also not in love with Chucky. He's just bisexual and very confused and frustrated because he's been focused on his issues with school and he hasn't gone out or thought about dating in a very long time and he's never thought about men and he's just mad that gay sex keeps happening in his apartment that he's not involved in. It's a lot for him to take in because he's had a rough past few weeks. So the three of them roll him a little burrito thank you and hand it to him and he's like i didn't know you guys did dandelions and they're like yeah we all do but shh, don't worry don't worry about it, little buddy this will help and he's like well things can't get any worse i guess we contrast this with the development in lil and kimmy's storyline where in the comments of one of Kimmy's clip clop videos, where Lil is briefly seen laughing in the background, someone comments like, OMG, who's that? Is that your new girlfriend? And Kimmy's like, no, haha, still dating the girl from this video. And the person just responds, oh, this one seems nicer. <laughs> So Kimmy's had to think about that a little bit. Uh-huh. Everyone's going through it a little bit <laughs> at this point. The commenter is not wrong. Yet yeah, they're not wrong. Okay, so back to Angelica and Susie. Angelica has been trying to find her calling and has mostly just been mindlessly scrolling through the Greg's List Help Wanted ads while watching bad reality TV. But then, Susie gets a call from a major music label that found her song on Clip Clop and wants to sign her. And it's very exciting because this could be her big break, but also she's been scammed before, as we saw on All Grown Up, so she's not really sure what to say. And then Angelica just like grabs the phone and is like, okay, send over a contract and we'll take a look at it and see if it meets our standards. So then Angelica just grabs the phone and is like, okay, send over a contract and we'll take a look at it and see if it meets our standards. And then she hangs up and Susie's just... And Angelica's like, okay, let me know when they send over the contract and I'll look it over. I got really good at negotiating contracts at school, so don't worry. I'll make sure they don't screw you over. You should also look into hiring a manager before you meet with them, though. I can help you interview people to make sure you find someone who won't, like, take advantage of you. So they do that and we see a very brief montage of some of the people that show up at the interview. Lil and Kimmy's old bad roommate, Chucky's manager from work who's trying to leverage the fact that he's managed a robot band. <laughs> Kimmy shows up at one point and she and Susie get sidetracked a little conversation until Angelica finally interrupts like, okay, so what experience do you have? And Kimmy very cheerfully says, none. <laughs> Cause she's just there to show them a really cute outfit she designed for Susie. So all that's very chaotic, and in each interview we see more and more of Angelica's expertise in all the aspects of this, and she and Susie have a really good time, and it's one of the first times that she stopped being really anxious about her businesswoman problems, and while the interviews are happening, she's also going over the contract they sent over. And somewhere in this process, they realize that the best person for the job is none other than Angelica Pickles. And it's a perfect fit because Angelica has always been really drawn to show business, but as a manager, she gets to boss Susie around and yell at anybody else who tries to boss Susie around. And she gets to use all the skills that she learned in business school, but in a way that's actually interesting for her. And she gets to wear way more fun suits for it. Oh, she's definitely rocking a lot of very fun colored pantsuits. It's the dream. 
the label ends up signing with Susie and says that they want to hire a team to make a music video for her song to promote it. But she and Angelica tell them not to worry about hiring a team because they've already got one in mind. So the last episode of the season is everybody coming together to make a music video with Dill making a bunch of weird sculptures and props and Kimmy making costumes and Lil choreographing and Chucky borrows some of the suits and stuff from work and Phil gets to be the hot boy and Tommy directs it all. And doing this video and working with his friends again helps to remind him what he liked about filmmaking in the first place. Also, there is a small storyline where they have to break into their house to get the sculpture that Dill's been working on all season, <laughs> which is just a giant reptar made out of all of their old childhood toys. Yeah, and it's really cute. Because they think it'll be a really good shot. Mm -hmm. And in this, we find out that their dad was fully aware about uh, the dandelions. And he was just keeping quiet because Dill was also hooking him up. <laughs> and then when Dee Dee found out, he was just like, our son under our own roof. Oh no, so sorry, Dill. Oh no, Dee Dee. <laughs> You better consult Dr. Lipschitz about this. So in this, we wrap up a couple of our storylines. Tommy hasn't completely figured out everything that he wants, but he's got a clearer idea of who he is, the same way that Angelica does. On the other hand, we've also got a few things getting set up for next season. Namely, the Kimmy Lil situation. To give it some room to breathe, since this show is getting at least six seasons in a movie, <laughs> we leave them with one specific scene. As they mess around on the set of Susie's video, and they're having a really fun time, and Lil has just resigned herself to the fact that she might just be feeling these butterflies forever, Kimmy's French girlfriend finally calls her. And unlike every other time she's called this season, Kimmy doesn't excuse herself to go have a conversation. She keeps looking at Lil, and then she hits decline call, and they make eye contact. So next season we're gonna set up some nonsense where they both like each other, and exactly half of the friend group each knows about their crushes on each other, um, except for Dill, who knows about all of it, but thinks they're just not discussing it because it would make the apartment awkward. <laughs> iconic roommate trio. <laughs> and Phil and Chucky both get longer storylines next season, probably. I would like to introduce a uh, Chucky storyline where, since he's so good at writing the campaigns for D&D, &D, and Tommy's having a rough go, maybe Chucky writes the script for the next movie. And he's very anxious about it, but good for him. Yeah. Um, and as funny as I think it would be for Phil's storyline to be that all of a sudden he has a million followers online. It's just not realistic with the kind of content that he's making. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yay, Rugrats! Yay, Chloe and Noah! Yay, Yay gay, gay people! people. <laughs> Didn't you love that, kids? Wasn't that a cool, fun look at a new great TV show that doesn't exist? <laughs> We've had a lot of fun tonight, but it's time to talk about how we can make shows like Rugrats all pubed up possible, and that's viewers like you. Uh, if you go to this link, which is also in the bio, along with all of our social media and the Pinterest board for this situation. Oh, we're linking that too? <laughs> I'm not appreciating it enough. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> Somebody has to. That's our brand new Patreon, and we would really love it if at least one person could go check it out. Cause God, we need to get new batteries for this camera. <laughs> the battery died again. And we had to take a break because our camera batteries are very worn out because they're very old. Oh, we're running out of battery. Let me switch that out. So this is also low battery. Okay, so the battery's dying yeah, and there's a plane. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Please support us on Patreon. I'm so tired. Yeah. They're pooping out so it's fast. It's not good. They are at least six years old and apparently you're supposed to replace them after four years. My college is reopening in the fall, and while that is really cool, and I am so excited to go back and rediscover why I hate peer review workshops so much, uh, it means it's going to get a little harder to shoot videos. So if you want to help me pay for train tickets, because everything about this just kind of indicates that I am never going to figure out how to drive. Um, someday. Someday. But if you want to pay for the train tickets from my school to Chloe's house, you can help us make sure there is never a gap in our content and that our media empire can really get going and we can say, look at me now, dad. Look at me now, dad. Look at me now, dad.
At lower tiers, we have tadpoles, pollywogs, and froglets. Um, and with all of those, your name will be featured in our videos. Um, and you can get some fun community content and exclusive videos. And you get to be one of the teeniest, tiniest frogs. <laughs> uh, higher tiers, that's frogs, birthday party reptile company, pet store employee, zookeeper. Uh, you're going to get a lot of things that we thought were fun. <laughs> Like paper dolls of us and our video outfits. Uh, even more exclusive content, but this time it's vampire themed. Uh, and the hedge frogs are we kids club phone calls on your birthday. Where you can get a personal phone call with the two of us on your birthday. You'll have to tell us when your birthday is and what your phone number is, but then we'll call you. There should currently be a video up right now of us making our costumes for this video and chatting about random stuff and sharing some exclusive Grandma Julie stories. I can't even say how I came out to Grandma Julie. <laughs> she outed me to herself. <laughs> It was insane. Okay, that was that was a different day from when um, she asked me if you had a if you had a little weenie, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That yeah, was a for sure. Day. Also, if you pledge one hundred dollars a month, you will get an actual invitation to our actual real life birthday party, which is soon. So get your cards ready. Um, money cards and birthday cards. Mm -hmm. uh, our first stretch goal is a really fun one that we hope will hit soon at a very very low number. We're gonna put out slots with the ZEP. Also, one of our stretch goals um, is to get me an antique spinning wheel that I found on Craigslist that the owner will not sell to me because I don't have enough money. Um, and then I could live out my dream of every night I could brush my teeth and wash my face and then go over to my own personal spinning wheel and very dramatically pretend to prick my finger on it like I'm Sleeping Beauty. And then I could fall to my bed in a dreamless, deep slumber and I think that maybe that would cure my depression. We don't know. We haven't tried it yet. Our last few videos have been posted pretty close together because we're really trying to capitalize off the success <laughs> but after this we're probably going to be posting just once a month for a while because we're trying to build up a backlog of videos for when I go back to school. So but Theoretically, there will never be a time where you're not getting content from us, unfortunately. <laughs> but if we have more patrons, then it'll be a lot easier to film more videos and we might be able to post more frequently. So we hope you might consider checking that out. Either way, we love you though. Love you. Okay, um, like, comment, subscribe, check out all of our links. Bedtime, Bedtime baby. baby! Yeah, post for a thumbnail, yeah. dummies. Chucky shirt and the green cargo shorts. And I was supposed to be born with red hair, but genetics did something bad. So instead I've got uh, Kimmy's three ponytails. <laughs> and I made a Kimmy dress. <laughs> and I have cowboy boots that don't fit, so <laughs> I'm on my tippy toes. And you've kind of just kind of taken inspiration mm -hmm. from what Kimmy would have wanted. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, yay gay people! Yay gay people! Oh. Bring ASMR. Yeah. Let us know if you want an ASMR video from us because I love ASMR and Noah does not. Noah left me alone this week to go visit their stupid boyfriend for his stupid birthday. <laughs> So I've just been doing this and watching Tangled the series and making Derek Hale AMVs. Ooh, also, my makeup came out pretty today. Look at her. She has little pearls. <laughs> so this is Noah's Wawa, just like Chucky's Wawa. Yeah. But a different animal. I would like to thank my parents' rough separation <laughs> and the fact that my father felt really bad for going on vacation and he brought me back this. Look at me now, Dad! Look at me now, Dad! <laughs> Go gay people! Um, also, side note, um, Phil is the meme king of the group and I just feel like that's important for his characterization. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, like, I love him. I don't think he needs any plot line aside from yeah. just annoying his gay parents, mm -hmm. who he fully knows are gay yeah. and would like to get divorced yeah. from each other. <laughs> yeah, he's just having a fun time playing slime craft. Like, I think that he's aware that they are gay and only together for the children. Mm -hmm. But also in his mind, he's like, but I'm amazing. Yeah. Why would they not want to both live with me? <laughs> um, also important to note, um, Phil is the meme king. Um, Dill is the one making the memes. <laughs> Very much Dill is just making insane, incomprehensible fever dream memes. And I love that for them. A little cow. Look at me now, dad. Look at me now, dad.